How's it going everyone? It's Drago. We're back with another My Hero Academia video. This time I'm covering all of season six. I don't think I've actually like gone over a full season before on this channel. First off, spoilers for season six of My Hero Academia. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to go over most of it. This season in particular was very, very different for me because this was the season I actually like legit met some of the voice actors from the show. The first just kind of random coincidence thing. Uh, I think when I met them, it was around like episode six or seven. The convention I went to was supposed to have Deku Bakugo and Todoroki's voice actors. Well, it turned out... Uh, uh, Justin Briner was not able to be there, which I'm still depressed about to this day. It was actually kind of hilarious that the episode that week in particular had uh, the characters kind of making fun of Deku, like him leaving the group, like, where'd you go? Why'd you leave us? And that was absolutely hilarious for me, just because I was like, I felt the same thing. Why'd you leave us? But that's going to be very, very specific to me. It was actually kind of wild because that same episode had everyone that I had met, you know, during that convention, except uh, for one voice actor. And that was Johnny Young Bosch, uh, who voiced Nine in the second My Hero movie. I probably said his name wrong. I'm sorry. He even had Ragdoll in there and I met her voice actor, which was pretty wild. This season was absolutely action-packed, and for me, I think season three is still my favorite season of the show. I think this season is number two, because I really like this season. I think there's a lot of things that were very, very top tier for me. I'll go through this kind of just in the order of the season, I guess. The beginning part, like, I don't so much care about the uh, Paranormal Liberation Army raid that was going on, but there was some very cool moments within that. Out of those early fights, I do remember, like, Hiroshima kind of being such a coward at the beginning of that battle, but then he kind of mans up when he needs to and, like, helps everyone fight. I thought that was a cool moment. I don't like to read ahead for the manga because I would like to be surprised during the season, uh... But there was one section in this season in particular where I read, and I'll talk about that when we get there. For at least the beginning half of this season, I had not seen anything about it. So the Hawks versus uh, Twice fight, I thought was going to be like a lot longer. I knew the fight was going to happen because I'd seen the uh, manga cover that had Twice and Hawks fighting on it, but I had known nothing about the fight itself. And I'd heard people hyping it up like, oh, this is going to be an insane fight and all that. Honestly, for me, like out of all the fights during the season, that was like the most like underwhelming one just because I thought it was going to last a lot longer. I like the whole ramifications of it. And that, like, you actually had death happen. And it actually does lead to some real-world consequences of killing twice, both on the hero side and the villain side. So I do like that as well. The last little section of the raid being the whole Giganto Machina and Class 1A helping to stop him was a very cool team effort. And is that the first time that they played Yusei Run for like someone else? Because they gave uh, Yusei Run to uh, Red Riot. I don't know if it was like the only time, but like it's so rare when it's not Deku or like Bakugo or All Might that I'm just like, dude, they're doing Yusei Run for Red Riot. What the heck? With the whole aftermath of that, my only one problem is you had the quote-unquote heroes that died uh, with midnight being one of them i mean they show like the students crying and they show her little like mask thing that she wore you didn't show me a body i mean they say that she's dead that's just a little gripe i have i'm pretty sure she's not gonna come back but who knows maybe she's not dead the more impactful side of things on the first half of the season being pretty much the fight to stop shigaraki the opening part of that raid on the hospital was very like this is going too well and the beginning part of this was obviously where, you know, I had the whole convention thing and that's a fun moment for me. But otherwise, nothing too eventful happens really in the hospital raid section. I mean, you get a bunch of heroes dying. You get the Nomu coming out. Uh, you get Mariko uh, fighting a lot. 
and losing limbs. It isn't until Shigaraki wakes up that like things start really hitting the fan. When Shigaraki gets out, that's where the stakes raise so much now that he has uh, all for one and his quirk is massively buffed and just the absolute destruction that he causes. The one complaint I did see with this fight in particular is they kind of tone down certain scenes, uh, mainly blood and uh, Bakugo getting stabbed. But to me, like for the most part, it stays intact. I probably get why they couldn't go too bloody with it. You're already having people breaking their arms and bleeding already. Like if you go so bloody with it, they're probably going to get like an R rating and they have like a PG-13 practically. So, I mean, you got it mostly intact, but it is a little bit saddening that you couldn't get like the full goriness to it. I absolutely love the teamwork that they have in this fight that like, okay, a racer is a main player that we have. We have to keep this guy's eyes open staring at Shigaraki because if he even like blinks for a second, we are all dead. And just the tag team comboing that they do against Shigaraki to try and literally kill this guy. The Shigaraki fight by itself was pretty peak, but you get the additional bonus of the League of Villains eventually showing up to aid Shigaraki when he basically lost at that point. And you get the amazing Dobby reveal that he is actually part of the Todoroki family. And I love that moment so much. It is so, so good. I also love that this is the first time that you get Shoto acknowledging Endeavor as his dad. Like, because he literally calls him dad in the moment. Just the whole, like, pain that you see on Endeavor that he, like, thinks his son has been dead for the longest time. And here he is in front of him, this, like, serial killer monster. The whole Todoroki Dobby backstory as a whole was, like, top tier. Going into the second half of the season, this is where I had like parts of it spoiled for me at the time. And I was like, there's no way that's real. That's gotta be like a fan made chapter. And I looked it up and I was like, holy crap, this is real. Obviously what I'm talking about is the Deku leaving UA situation. And at the time I really didn't like that. I was like, there's no way he would leave his friends. He loves and cares about them so much. Like, and this is what his dream was. Why would he throw that away? At the time, I did read the Dark Deku arc because I was like, this feels like it's going so much against his character. I don't know if I like this. And, you know, I read it all the way up until, like, the whole Stars and Stripes showing up. So basically where the season ended. So going into season seven, I don't really know much. Seeing it all play out now uh, and ha after having read it too, I really enjoy this arc. I didn't like it at first. I did not like... Deku leaving his friends and I think it is an important lesson for him because he really did try and do the All Might thing of I have to shoulder this all alone. I have to be All Might. Had him realize, hey, I can't do this alone. I need my friends. I need my classmates to help me end all for one and end all these villains, particularly the last three episodes were some of my favorite episodes in the whole series like some of the emotional beats some of the fights that were happening really got to me so you start out the second part with uh Deku obviously on his own being like a vigilante I absolutely love the rematch he has against uh muscular so Deku's first fight against muscular is my favorite fight in all of my hero academia I love that fight so, so much. I even did a video about it on this channel already. Just because, you know, that's the first time Deku is actually acknowledged as a hero. Like, he literally gets someone idolizing him because he saved their life. Also, I love that Koda shows up again later in the season and he's wearing Deku's shoes. That made me smile so much. And that they even had a little flashback scene of him buying Deku's shoes. It's like, ah, oh, dude, I love this little dude. Just with how much he struggled the first time against Muscular and how it literally almost killed him and he was like giving up but because like Kodo was like about to die too he's like I gotta push through and beat this guy. It shows how much Deku's grown because when he was fighting him he was thinking back to his first time fighting him like okay how did I win the first time? 
Uh, it has to be something with how his muscle fibers work. And it really does show how much Deku has powered up because he has so many quirks now. It shows him using his full kit to defeat Muscular again. And he one-shots him, basically. The only thing I didn't really love about the beginning part of uh, the second half was just sometimes Deku's a little bit douchebaggy to, like, the people around him, mainly All Might, like, and he does apologize for it later. Like, I realize, hey, I was being too mean. It's just weird when he's been so, you know, happy and cheery for all of the series, then he's so, like, mopey now. For how simple one for all was initially like oh it's just this power that we pass on through the years and i get super punchy powers you know from all might to where there's literal people that deku talks to now and he gains access to their quirks i think they've handled the scenes kind of explaining all this pretty darn well i actually enjoy him talking to the previous users of one for all and getting their life experiences and how they use their quirks better and even deku even figuring out new ways to use their quirks that the previous user had never even thought of which pretty much culminates into the lady nagant fight and deku really showcases like his smarts in battle because it was the third quirk that he hadn't used pretty much at all which was like Faji, or I'm sorry if I got it wrong, I don't really remember too much, but it made his legs red and made him go super duper fast. The fact that he had never really used it before, but he got a brief description of it from the third, and he was like, okay, cool, I can use this to like my advantage now. I think it just shows how capable he is of understanding how quirks and stuff work. I really enjoyed their fight. I thought it was very cool. I think it was cool seeing how Deku had to strategize to beat this girl. I absolutely loved him using the smoke and like just chucking parts of his outfit like out of the smoke to get him to shoot just so that he can build an opening for himself. The ending of this fight, perfect, cool, one for all betraying her makes total sense he's an absolute douchebag you know he's gonna do it i don't remember what point of the season was but with uh, all for one doing that now it's your turn to uh deku i thought that was kind of menacing because he's trying to turn all might's words against him my only problem and it isn't with the fight itself it's right after it because you have overhaul with her as well i just don't buy deku letting overhaul see airy because he's like I want you to apologize to Aerie and overhaul that I already forgotten about her, but like, I don't think you should introduce the child back to the abuser because she got abused pretty heavily by him. Don't feel you should put Aerie back in that situation. That's just my only complaint with it. I get his motivation of him wanting overhaul to apologize to her, but I just, I just don't feel like you should do that, Deku. We must protect Aerie at all costs. So going into the finale of this season, which is Deku vs. Class 1A, particularly the episode of Deku vs. Class 1A. That episode is one of my favorite episodes of all time now. I love that episode so much. With everyone talking to Deku, and they're all fighting him, but like telling him why he means so much to them in their lives in certain moments that they experienced that impacted them and why they love Deku so much. I absolutely love that episode just seeing how much his friends really care for him and really want to protect him and be by his side. As the fight goes on you can obviously see he does not want to fight them. He's crying most of the time and he does not want to be confronted by this but just their words eventually do get to him and he finally decides I can be by their side. They can keep up with me. We can fight all for one together. I remember when that chapter came out with Bakugo apologizing to Deku. And I loved it so much because I never really liked Bakugo too much until the third season. And that was where he kind of opened up a bit to Deku. You know, talked about One for All and All Might. And how he's always trying to surpass him. But, you know... Deku always figures out a way and that was the you know starting moments of Bakugo not being so much of a bully and like realizing hey I've actually been a douchebag and into the next seasons 
and movies. I loved it with, you know, Bakugo occasionally coming up to Deku asking about, like, his progress with training with All Might and stuff and wanting to see how he's doing. I think it's so fun and I think it is nice to see him being nicer and actually caring about his friend. I think with him apologizing in the end of season six, I think there's some things that people don't fully understand. Bakugo is so prideful. He does not want anyone to look down on him in any way, shape, or form. And I think this fact of him in front of everyone, mind you, everyone in his class is right behind him, in front of everyone saying, hey, I bullied you all my life because I was jealous of you. And, you know, the power that you got from All Might, you know, I just hated you. And I wanted to destroy you in everything possible. And I made up this nickname Deku for you, and you took that on as a hero name. You know, basically everything I did bad to you, you overcame it. I just loved that he admitted that, hey, I've been a really bad person to you, and it was all basically out of jealousy. And that was the first moment he called him Izuku Midoriya as well. That hit me so freaking hard. It was the equivalent to freaking Todoroki saying dad. Because it's like, he's only called him Deku this whole time. He's never actually called him his real name. The first time that he actually used his real name and like legit apologized for all the crap he's put him through through his whole life. I thought it was such a beautiful moment that he's actually, like, becoming a better person. It was in the finale. I, I love it so much that, like, Bagago was going to say Izuku Midoriya again. Then he kind of, like, halfway through his sentence caught himself off. And it's like, oh, yeah, De Deku. I love that moment so much. Even Deku caught it because he's like, Bakugo, you you don't have to call me this. You You can still call me Deku if you want. Don't force yourself. You know, I love the whole class working together to get him to come back to them which they did and the next episode was equally as good for me because that was uh the whole class trying to convince the whole crowd of people at ua to let deku stay there i loved uraraka's speech i thought she did really well that it was her sole mission to care about her friend and make sure that he's protected I thought it was very, very sweet, and I freaking loved the moment so much with, like, Deku, um, I don't remember the, like, animal girl, and then Koda all, like, hugging together. I love that they changed kind of the tagline of the whole series in this moment, because it used to be, you know, this is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero, to this is the story of how we became the world's greatest heroes. I love it so much. It's so good. And that whole tagline, Uraraka's speech, and like Deku crying and getting hugged by the people that he's saved. Too bad we didn't get Aerie in there. It was just such a beautiful moment to me. In the finale, um, I really like Stain showing up again. I miss him so much. He was very fun. I am liking his new outfit. I don't know if I like it better than his season 2 outfit, but uh, I'm loving that he's back again. And I like how... He had this talk with All Might, and like, yeah, he kind of has lost his way. Dude, the biggest reveal of that, and I was like, dude, it's her, uh, was the girl cleaning the statue, was the girl that All Might saved in his final fight. Like, dude, that blew my mind. Oh my goodness, it's the same chick. I love this so much. I'm actually even surprised they gave Stars and Stripes a voice already, and I think her intro is pretty cool flying on a bunch of blackbirds and I absolutely love the class deciding that hey we're gonna do what we did during the music festival of changing how everyone looked at us from a negative light to a positive one and we can do that again with the public from heroes being in a negative light to a positive light I love their little we can do it as a group little speech that they made. Also was really liking everyone's little casual outfits that they were in. It was very fun. Absolutely loved at the end that uh, Deku woke up and like Uraraka's is right next to him and it scares the crap out of him. He just like flings Black Whip all over the place. Overall, I really enjoyed the season. I still feel like season three like tips out just a little bit more for my top season. 
but this is a solid number two for me. I absolutely love this season. I thought it was very, very fun and very suspenseful at times, and I love the big reveals. I'm very sad that the season's over because now I have to wait probably a year until the season comes back. I know season seven is already in production. They already have scripts going, so maybe it goes a little faster. It doesn't help that the author of My Hero keeps going on breaks, so they'll probably have longer delays now because there's not as much material to animate. Leave your guys' thoughts of My Hero Academia Season 6 in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and this is Drago. Signing out.